Roman Baber, thanks so much for making the time and good of you to make the time. Perhaps uh, I'll just start out with some of your, um, I guess, um, views that you held at when you were an independent MPP. Obviously, um, you were a former member of the Progressive Conservative Caucus in the Ontario legislature um, before writing a letter to uh, the Premier as relating to some of your concerns with um, lockdowns and mandates, etc., um, do you see that as obviously a lot of people who are, you know, a part of the Conservative Party federally are also members of the Progressive Conservative Party uh, provincially and obviously, you know, members of the uh, Progressive Conservative Party supported Doug Ford. Doug Ford was the one who um, imposed a large portion of COVID-19 restrictions. And so uh, there is probably going to be a decent portion of Progressive Conservative members who, you know, did support the COVID-19 restrictions. And again, those people in many cases would also be Conservative members. Do you see any of your, you know, views against COVID-19 lockdowns as perhaps setting you back in this Conservative leadership race? Good to be with you, Wyatt. Well, in fact, I believe that uh, the majority of the contestants in the federal leadership race have come around to agreeing with me uh, that Canada's COVID response was perhaps um, not in the best interest of Canadians in that uh, we have imposed a considerable toll on Canadians by way of lockdowns on their health and mental health. Uh, we're also seeing that lockdowns have not been effective. If you notice, China is now in a is on its sixth or seventh lockdown. And at the same time, we now know that the inadvertent uh, collateral toll of lockdowns on Canadians is very significant. More, according to the Canadian Mental Health Association, already more than 4,000 Canadians passed away because of their surgeries were delayed. Ontario alone uh, canceled 300,000 surgeries. We have an almost doubling rate of deaths from overdose. We have a million cancer screenings missed. I think it's important that history regards what happened fairly, so we never go back there again. Uh, look, I'm running to restore Canada's democracy, opportunity, and trust in government. This is not just a conversation about lockdowns or passports. It's about the cancel culture and ideology that precipitated these unprecedented actions. And obviously, um, one of the biggest things that the federal government is, um, I guess, moving forward with now as the cost of living uh, is rising is uh, what they call affordable child care. And um, obviously, child care due to some of these programs are, um, you know, starting to lower in many parts of the country. Your opponent in this race, uh, Jean Charest, has um, put out his plan for child care. Speak a little bit about whether or not you personally would keep the deals, um, which the liberal child care deals, which has now been signed with every province uh, and territory. Um, I'm going to review every single deal entered into recently by the federal government, including the child care deal. Uh, what I would say is it's important to appreciate that life in Canada is becoming unaffordable. And it's not just because um, of the incredible amount of deficit spending that Canada has engaged in. It's the unprecedented expansion of the federal debt. Uh, it's lockdown induced uh, inflation because supply uh, was eroded. And at the same time, demand has come back very, very strong, uh, thereby causing price inflation. We need to look at what we can do to make life more affordable for Canadians. Uh, and that's something that I'm definitely going to be speaking about on the campaign trail. And obviously, obviously, many people can appreciate the fact that, you know, you don't have that plan out yet, given that, you know, the leadership race isn't even halfway over yet. Um, but perhaps just obviously the federal government says that, uh, you know, this child care um, the child care deals that, you know, they've came to with various provinces and territories are ways to, you know, combat the rising cost of living. So, I mean, regardless of, I guess, your plan for it, um, do you see child care as a way that can reduce the cost of living? Because obviously, as I mentioned, it does see the cost of living and specifically child care costs after these deals have been signed does seem to be coming down. Sure. Uh, look, uh, there's uh Regretfully, no government program is truly free. Someone has to pay for it um, at the end of the day. And I think that government expenditure is also causing uh, life in Canada to be unaffordable. What I'm uh, interested in is an ability to bring down not just the cost of living, but making uh, Canadian opportunity flourish again. Uh, that means that uh, I will not give up on the dream of home ownership. 
I do not want to give up on the dream of, of Canadians from starting their own business and, and realizing their own potential. Uh, I'm going to have a lot to say about uh, the culture that is thwarting, uh, I think, Canadian opportunity, including universal basic income. I'd like to see Canada uh, return to the days when it was a vibrant democracy that encouraged entrepreneurship and not just an expansion of the federal government. And one final question on childcare, and then I'll move on to a different topic. But on childcare, obviously, you mentioned that every government program has a cost. The counter argument from the federal government, though, on the child care issue and, and the cost that, you know, it has is that, you know, the it would almost be paid for by the amount of people that would be able to enter uh, the workforce because of this, you know, new child care program. Again, that's just what the federal government um, is saying. I, do you also believe that to be true? And I guess, furthermore, just do you think that, you know, the amount of people that are entering the workforce because of this child care plan will make up for the cost of the program? I don't know about that. What we have been seeing from the federal government is discouraging people from entering the workforce. We know that a lot of people left the workforce because of lockdowns. We know particularly women. We know that uh, a lot of people will likely be discouraged from entering uh, the workforce if uh, liberals get their way by way of universal basic income. Uh, I agree that we need to do everything possible to encourage people entering the workforce, but the, this liberal government is, uh, seems to be committed to encouraging people to leave the workforce, whether uh, by uh, locking us down, uh, or it's by onerous federal regulation, or by considering the implementation of universal basic income. And one final question before we conclude on housing. Obviously, the cost of housing is, you know, rising in Ontario and not just in Ontario, but obviously across Canada as well. And obviously the federal government would have a role to play, but so do, you know, the various provinces. I guess, how would you, you know, balance, you know, the efforts that the federal government takes versus what the efforts are that the provincial governments will take to, you know, lower the cost of housing? And what measures do you see the federal government being able to take to reduce the cost of housing? Absolutely. I, I do not want to give up on, on the dream of many Canadians to own a home. And there's certainly a role for the federal government to play. Uh, and there are some sensible things we can undertake to make housing more affordable. For instance, we can look at significantly increasing the first time home buyers RSP exemption. Right now it's at 35000 I would look to increase it significantly. Uh, I'd also propose that we divest ourselves of all unprotected federal land to increase the supply of land uh, and therefore making housing more affordable. And finally, I think that the very best way to encourage the construction of housing to bring down prices is to build transportation. We stop building transportation uh, in our country. We don't have the political stomach to do that anymore. Uh, I'm going to show the, co the courage and the leadership to build transportation uh, and that will uh, stimulate growth and construction of new and affordable communities. Okay, that is Conservative Leadership Candidate Roman Baber. Uh, Roman Baber, thanks so much for taking the time and for providing some of your insight. Thank you, Wyatt.